evening. I'm Victoria Young, VSB Board Chair, and I would like to call this meeting to order at 1900. Uh, please join me in acknowledging we are unlearning and relearning on the traditional and unceded lands of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh Nations. This meeting is being live streamed and the audio and visual recording will also be available to the public for viewing after the meeting. The footage of the meeting may be viewed inside and outside of Canada. It is our board's responsibility and particularly mine as chair to ensure our board meetings are conducted in a safe and respectful manner. As a board of education for school district is important, we model behavior we expect of our students in our schools. There's a link provided on the website for any questions to be submitted for the public question period, which is item 10 on the agenda. The link will remain active until immediately following the committee reports. For the meeting tonight, staff and trustees are in person in the boardroom at the Education Center. I'd like to take a roll call of trustees and senior management in the room. Vice Chair Preeti Friedkot. Present Chair, thank you. Trustee Chen Pedley. Present Chair, thanks. Trustee Shen. Present Chair, thank you. Trustee Fraser. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Trustee Ma. Present. Trustee Richardson. Present Chair. Trustee Zhang. Present Chair. Student Trustee Mia Liu. Present, thank you. Uh, we have regrets from Trustee Reddy tonight. Superintendent McGregor. Present Chair. Secretary Treasurer Green. Uh, present Chair. Deputy Superintendent David Nelson. Uh, present Chair. Associate Superintendent Learning and Information Services, Pedro De Silva. Uh, present Chair. Associate Superintendent Learning Services, Jody Langlois. Present Chair. Associate Superintendent Employee Services, Pete Newage. Present Chair. Associate Superintendent School Services, Rob Shindell. Absent. As Assistant Secretary Treasurer, Shazad Samji. Present Chair. Thank you everyone for joining us for the board meeting <clears throat> of the 2023 calendar year. As we close out January, I'd like to take a few minutes to share the board's best wishes for the remainder of this year. We'd also like to wish everyone who celebrated Lunar New Year a happy and prosperous year of the rabbit and year of the cat. In addition to joyous celebrations as this, there's a deep and critical learning about devastating histories that continue to reverberate today, such as the lessons and school-wide activities marking International Holocaust Remembrance Day. I encourage everyone to read the story posted on the district's website detailing how students and teachers at Thunderbird Elementary, Point Grey Secondary, and Lord Bing Secondary mark this important day of remembrance in the classroom. As a board, we are heartened by students and staff celebrations and commemorations of days and events of significance to the diverse communities throughout Vancouver. I know we will hear more about some of these activities this evening. This evening. These opportunities are wonderful community building and collective learning. I recently had the privilege of seeing important lessons come to life when I attended Scrappy Campers uh, at the Killarney uh, Theatre Club. It was fantastic. It was an original play written and directed by a former Killarney alumni, Sydney Moran Marino. It was a coming of age drama about grade 12 students embarking on a year long camping trip where students learn more about themselves and how to connect with their peers. It was absolutely hilarious. It was thought provoking. It was, it was absolutely touching. We look forward to more events and activities in the month of February, which marks Black History Month, as well as the district's focus on diversity and inclusion, including International Day of Women and Girls in Science, Random Acts of Kindness Day, International Mother Language Day, and Pink Shirt Day, to mention a few. Learning about how staff and students mark these and other occasions help us as a board stay close to our purpose to oversee our education 
our public education system so that it provides students with opportunities for quality education. Now we'll move to this evening's agenda. Item two, adoption of minutes. 2.1, meeting of November 28th, 2022. Moving to adopt the minutes, is there a mover? Trustee Richardson, a seconder. Uh, Trustee Chan Pedley. Any questions in regards to these minutes? If there are no uh, objections, we will adopt the minutes of November 28th, 2022 by consensus. Move, moved unanimously. Item 2.2, matters arising from the minutes. Next is matters arising from the minutes, update to trustee appointments. There have been some changes to trustee appointments for school liaison and civic committees. UCPE Elementary is now under Britannia Secondary Family of Schools with trustee Fraser as school trustee liaison. Carleton Elementary is now called Cunningham and is under the Gladstone Secondary Family of Schools with trustee Richardson as a school trustee liaison. In addition, according to policy 18, Section 7.1, Trustee Chan Pedley has been appointed as mentor to student trustee Mia. Item 2.3, public delegations board meeting of January 23, 2023. Is there a mover to these minutes? A mover and a seconder to adopt these minutes. Uh, trustee Friedcoat, seconder. Uh, trustee Chin, any questions in regards to these minutes? If there are no objections, we will adopt the minutes of January 23rd, 2023 by consensus. Uh, the minutes have been uh, adopted. Item 2.4, matters arising from the minutes. Do we have any matters arising? Item number three, superintendent's update. I will ask superintendent Helen McGregor to present uh, the superintendent's update. Thank you, chair. And I want to officially welcome the board to their first public board meeting of 2023. I, I see our education plan taking form in classrooms, in schools, and in our various departments. My hope is that in 2023, we will continue with this momentum. At these meetings, I give a summary of what's happening at the district and how it all ties back to the education plan. I use this time to highlight how the education plan is translating into classrooms and impacting students. So next slide, please. Uh, and one more slide. The first thing I'd like to highlight is the second annual Black Excellence Day that was observed by schools across the VSB on Friday, January the 13th. This day celebrates black history, voices and stories and encourages dialogue on the history of racism and civil rights in Canada. Students and staff join districts across the province for a virtual Black Excellence Day online event hosted by the Ninandotu Society and the Burnaby School District. The event featured a range of speakers, including Alice Mirage, the director of the African Ancestry Project, Brian Burnham, retired BC Lions wide receiver, and the Honorable Rakna Singh, Minister of Education and Child Care, among others. I had a chance to pop into Ms. Ashley Bodner's grade six, seven class at Henderson while they were watching the live stream. It was a joy to see so many students engaged and learning about the accomplishments of so many excellent black Canadians. Next slide. With Black History uh, Month coming up next month, many teachers are also incorporating lessons on black excellence in their classrooms. Following this theme, I've invited a staff member and a student from Norquay Elementary to share their take takeaways from Black Excellence Day this year. With me today um, are kindergarten teacher Levi Ong and grade seven student Celia. Welcome Levi and Celia, and I'll pass it over to the two of you. Nice to see you on the screen. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so I guess I'll start first. Um, thank you so much for having me tonight, everyone. Um, my name is Levi Ong and I teach at John Norquay Elementary. 
Um, so I'm here, as Helen said, to talk about how I facilitated Black excellence um, into my classroom and how we move forward into February, which is Black History Month. Um, let's get started. Let me get my notes. OK, so in uh, kindergarten, we often focus on community and teamwork. We not only need to celebrate collectively, but we also need to highlight the uniqueness that everybody brings to the class. At Norquay, we believe celebrating differences will help build better understanding and appreciation in each, each other. In the day leading up to Black Excellence Day, we have been reading books to learn more about Black excellence and culture. And these books included Hair Love and Cool Cuts, as seen here. These two books help guide my class into the discussion of representation and how they can connect better when you see characters that resemble ourselves. We in Vancouver are living in a city where we are proud to have so many different cultural groups. In recent years, there has been an influx of picture books that tell stories from all different cultural backgrounds, and kids are drawing connections with shared experiences from these books. In my class, there are a few students who are Black, while reading the books with Black representation, it was amazing to see their faces light up. Both had huge smiles on their faces and became much more engaged with the conversation. I asked the class what they liked about the books, and one student, Morgan, responded with, this hair looks like my hair. It makes me super, super happy, and I want to smile. We continued our conversation about representation and another student, Eldana, summed it up beautifully. She said, your skin tone, your hair, it is all beautiful. After continuing this conversation at home with his mom and dad, Morgan's mom reached out to me and offered to come to my class and my big buddy's class to talk about her experience as a black woman from Ghana. She wanted to share her lived experience of being black in Canada and talk about the ways we can lift each other up. It has been a huge honor to work in collaboration with Morgan's family, and our class is excited to learn more during Black History Month. Black Excellence Day is a great movement to highlight achievements that many individuals have accomplished throughout the years. The idea of celebrating positivity at an early age can help circumvent negative stereotypes and prejudices. I hope with the influence of Black Excellence Day, we are able to then celebrate excellence in all cultures. As a non-Black educator, I feel an important responsibility to be an ally to both my colleagues and students in the Black community. I end with a quote from Dr. Goldie Mohammed. It is our job as educators, not just to teach skills, but also teach students to know, validate, and celebrate who they are. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to share with you what I do in my classroom. Now, I'd like to introduce one of our grade seven students who will share her reflections on Black Excellence Day. Please welcome Celia. Thank you so much for having me. So I enjoy participating in Black Excellence Day as it is nice to see minority groups get represented and show that everyone is equal and can do great things. There was a quote during the event that showed, no matter what anyone says or does, you are always excellent. Black Excellence Day helps lift us up and show that we all have excellence within us. The most inspiring speaker from Black Excellence Day for me was Anicia Thomas, a grade 12 student from Kamloops, BC. I loved listening to her because I could not, I could connect to so many things that she said. She said she was shy when she was younger and couldn't advocate for herself. I was a little bit like that too, and it was inspiring to see someone talk about that in such a big venue. She talked about knowing who you are instead of relying on how society sees you, and I think that is very powerful. The thing that I will take away from Black Excellence Day is the good message about trying to make a difference in your community. Trying to work towards the difference you can make, even if it is small, is always good, as it will help make the world a better place. Even if it starts small, the change can get bigger, and eventually we could change the world. I believe it is important to learn about Black history and Black excellence because a lot of the time people don't recognize it and pretend the past did not happen. But if you don't learn about the past, it will continue. Racism is a big problem and it impacts people's lives every day. And if we learn about it, we can try to make a change and do better. 
If we do better, we will make everyone feel more welcome, which I think is really important. Thank you. Thank you to both of you for sharing your perspectives and the learning that's happened around Black Excellence Day. We really appreciate it. Um, I just wanted to see if there were any questions or comments from the board before we let our guests go. Just looking around the table. So uh, thank you for being here this evening. And I, I, from what I've heard, there's been a lead into Black Excellence Day and then there's going to be a lead into Black History Month. Maybe, I don't know if you know some details that you could share about the Black History Month activities that are coming up at Norway, because I'm just curious about what those might look like. Yeah, so in past year, like last year, we've had grade sevens and grade sixes do research on to black Canadians of that has um, their history and their biographies and it's highlighted within our school hallways. And this year, um, I personally, we are talking with my grade um, six buddy class and where the grade six may um, they will look into various Black Canadians and their history and then do little presentations and do uh, research together with my class. So there's lots of stuff going on and um, myself and some others are will be looking at, um, you know, creating more opportunities for families and everyone to come in and share their experiences as well. Thank you so much for that. Just looking to see if there's anything else from the group. I just wanted to thank you, uh, Levy and Celia. Thank you so much for being here this evening. We're going to wave at you so you can see us. Have a great evening. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. Thank you. So I'm going to continue with my uh, presentation. Uh, so the next slide, please. So shadowing a student, um, you can actually see some students sitting at the board table uh, in the picture on the screen. Um, as part of learning this past year, we assigned some homework to the senior leadership and learning team, as well as principals and vice principals throughout the district. Each of us were tasked with shadowing a student. This innovative approach to learning was an opportunity to see and feel firsthand what life is like as a student. This was all in an effort to build a deeper understanding of what matters most to students and to amplify student voice and encourage student agency. On January 18th, we all came together to discuss our experiences. Students ranging from grades 6 to 12 from John Oliver, Lord Bing, Gladstone, David Thompson, Britannia Elementary, and Crosstown, Schwaquaset, joined administrators throughout the district to discuss what it meant to be part of a vibrant learning community. The purpose of our meeting was to engage with students in the process of co-construction of our work in bringing the education plan to life. I had the pleasure of listening in on panels where students voiced their thoughts on how they learn best and also some of the barriers they face with learning. I was so impressed with what students brought to the table and the confidence they had in sharing with a room full of administrators, actually two rooms of administrators. They brought up a range of ideas, including ways to incorporate more equity into the curriculum and how to address diverse learning needs. What this exercise showed me, that is our VSB, students are not, not only intelligent, but they're also critical thinkers and have so many ideas that the adults can learn from. These conversations weren't always easy, but they are necessary. The demands on learners and education systems are evolving quickly. In the past, education was about teaching people something. Now, and especially with the goals of the education plan, we're challenging ourselves to create learning environments that will prepare students to be active, productive, and socially responsible citizens. So I'd really like to thank all the students and administrators who participated in the meeting and in the shadowing. Your voice truly matters. Um, I had a great opportunity to shadow a grade seven student at Hudson um, and participate not only in physical education, social studies and languages that afternoon, but boy oh boy did I learn a lot about what was on the minds of those grade seven students in school. So moving on to the next slide, I wanted to give a mention to a school renaming ceremony that occurred last year, but I didn't get a chance to tell the board since there was not a public board meeting in December. On December 9th, Sir Matthew Begbie Elementary School was gifted a Hunkanima name at a special renaming ceremony hosted by the Musqueam Indian Band. The new school name is Waquanis to Siaquam, 
which in English means the sun rising over the horizon. The school welcomes students, staff, delegates, and rights holders to celebrate the new name and completion of the first seismically safe school built in BC with Canadian mass timber. It's a beautiful school. The name was selected in collaboration with the Musqueam Language and Culture Department in recognition of Vancouver's Hastings Sunrise neighborhood, where the school is located. Like a sunrise, the new beginning for this school community. On day two of her new role, we were honored to have the new Minister of Education and Childcare, Rakna Singh, come to speak at the renaming ceremony, along with several Musqueam elders. A few days prior to the ceremony, myself, Trustee Fraser, and several district staff were fortunate to take part in a pronunciation lesson with Vanessa Campbell from the Musqueam Indian Band. Over Zoom, Vanessa taught us how to properly pronounce Waquanas Te Siakwam. She walked us through every letter, teaching us how to shape our mouths to produce the correct sounds. I would really like to thank members of Musqueam for not only gifting this new name, but also for giving us a treasured lesson on how to properly pronounce the name. I also need to say while we were there that day, the deep learning that students have done about their school and their school name and the Musqueam Indian Band was pretty um, amazing to see and hear. And they are committed to ongoing learning that they will be doing. Um, so we move to the next slide. We actually um, have a video with some highlights from the renaming ceremony. So if you can play the video. Wakwanas to shock to shock them. Wakwanas Wakwanas to shock them. I am a grade seven student. I'll be talking about the history of the land and the school's connection to the Musqueam people. Today we'll be talking about the importance of our school, acknowledging the traditional territory. And well modeling. As we are being given this new name, we as a school will cherish and share the responsibilities of the name. For example, we will not disrespect the name or make fun of it, or the name of the school could be taken away from our school community. We promise to pronounce our new school name in the full version using the Hunkaminam language. We would be willing to share the school's name and its significance behind it. So you were watching um, Elder Larry Grant um, working with the students around the pronunciation of the school name. Um, and you saw the young students there singing the Coast Salish anthem. So for those of us who were honored to be there that day, quite a powerful um, celebration. So moving on to the next screen. So I'd like to talk to you about preferred secondary schedule. Um, so uh, I'd like to um, let you know that the secondary engagement that we just wrapped up um, had an extensive engagement. The district has made the decision to continue with the semester model. In addition, flexible instruction time, or otherwise known as FIT, will increase from 100 minutes per week to 160 minutes per week at all VSB secondary schools. This engagement process was significant in a variety of different ways. We received survey feedback from over 14,000 people, with many students, families, and staff members taking the time to provide qualitative feedback on what schedule would work best for them and why. Educators personally connected with hundreds of staff at secondary schools, as well as with students during in-person and online student discussion groups. All this feedback and these conversations were crucial for the decision-making process. And to give a little plug to the VSB podcast after the bell, you can hear some student thoughts on the semester uh, model in this month's episode. 
Uh, for anybody who is interested, the engagement summary report is available online at govsb.ca slash secondary survey. And I'd be pleased at this point to uh, answer any questions from the board. Thank you. Trustee Chan Pedley. Thank you, Chair. Um, through you, Chair, um, I have some questions about um, shadowing students. Um, really curious about your experience. Um, want to chat with you more about it, but I guess briefly, um, can you say what was something that you found was a challenge for students today um, and maybe something that was joyous for students? So I can speak about my experience through the chair. Um, something that was joyous, they were really thrilled to teach a new student, me, how to play Gaga Ball in gym. Um, they were really excited to explain the rules, um, look out for me as somebody learning how to play the game. So there was a lot of joy and a lot of smiles in that moment. So that opportunity to teach someone else something they didn't know how to do. Um, the thing I will say would be challenging, I found challenging, um, was sitting. Um, in my work, I'm moving around a lot. So something that I found challenging in that period was sitting for an extended period of time and not getting up and moving. Trustee Fraser. Thank you. And I have a, a question in a similar vein. Is there something that was quite unexpected in your work with the students? Was there something that was quite unexpected or something that you um, really brought you to see something from a different perspective because of your work with the students? Through you, Chair. Um, something that I um, really found different from when I was in school, um, when I was uh, participating in their uh, literacy uh, class, um, all of the students had chosen books. Um, individual books that they were writing book reports on. And I was talking to some of the students and they all had really good kind of reasons as to the book and the novel that they were reading. One of them had had a long conversation with the librarian in making a selection. Another one had read um, books all on a particular series and now was trying a new one. But the options and choice for students to read things that were very interesting to them was something that, that I found uh, very intriguing. So the impact of choice and the engagement of learners was something that I really appreciated. Any additional questions from trustees? Thank you, Superintendent McGregor. <clears throat> uh, we have, we are moving on to uh, four, uh, number four on the agenda, student trustee. I will now ask our student trustee, Mia Liu, to present her report. Thank you. In this report, I'll be providing an update on VDSC's initiatives and highlight some issues items that have been raised amongst our student stakeholders. Notably, there are two recent initiatives to celebrate, the Kenley Cup and our new VDSC newsletter. On December 16th, VDSC announced the winners of this year's Kenley Cup, with Fantech earning third, McGee placing second, and Point Grey securing its champion title. As a team, students across the district raised a total of over 250,000 cans, demonstrating our strength as a collaborative community. VDSC's next initiative will be the annual Sister School Switch, which strives to promote inter-school communication and will be launched in the upcoming months. In addition, the first issue of the VDSC newsletter was published on January 21st. Through this new endeavor, VDSC hopes to reach a broader student audience, increase transparency in VDSC decision-making, and facilitate communication with students who are not formal council members. Further, the Virtual Student Issues Box, a platform for students to submit questions and feedback on their learning experiences, has undergone a series of revamping, as name, email, and school are no longer required fields. VDSC has kicked off an advertisement campaign to spread awareness of the issues box, aiming to incentivize honest feedback from students. Common issues box submissions will be addressed via the VDSC newsletter following a discussion of said issues with VDSC representatives. Speaking of student issues, VDSC engaged in a multitude of discussions this past month with a pronounced emphasis on diversity and inclusion, revolving around student access to gender neutral bathrooms and counseling resources. 
To follow up with the gender neutral washroom discussion, the VDSC senior executive team will be meeting with district staff responsible for SOGI and student voice to liaise in thoughts on this and perspectives on this matter. With respect to counseling resources, the council discussed how to continue our advocacy for accessible mental health support and will be following up with district staff responsible for counseling services and safe and caring schools. As a part of our issues discussion, the VDSC also sought to understand the board's decision to reinstate the SLO program and the next steps that would occur. At this time, it is my understanding that the VPD has yet to write back and express whether they would like to collaborate with the board in this endeavor. As such, the VDSC feels that the SLO motion's tight timeline to implement a program for September 2023 demands student-based engagement that should occur promptly. In light of the board's decision, VDSC conducted a blind vote on the question, does VDSC, as a stakeholder group, want to be formally involved in the reimagining process of the SLO program? The verdict returned on a 31 to 4 decision, a decisive majority that would like to call for formal student involvement in the reimagining process. Moving forward, VDSE hopes to deliberate ways to consult students in this project with relevant VSB departments. As students, we believe that student voices are integral in creating a program that is supposed to serve, protect, and support us. VDSE looks forward to realizing this vision together. Finally, VDSE engaged with the Administrative Procedures Working Group as a stakeholder, and we look forward to making continued student contributions to revised and updated VSB procedures. That is all from me. Thank you. Thank you, student trustee Mia Liu. Very well spoken. Um, do we have any questions or comments from trustees? Trustee Fraser. I'd uh, just like to thank Mia for um, representing student voice so well here at the board table and um, appreciate the efforts that the VDFC is uh, going to to reach a broader audience and uh, and appreciate that they want to be engaged in the decisions that the board was making. And when you did your, your vote to be part of the process, uh, I appreciate that that was a positive one. So thank you. Trustee Richardson. Uh, through the chair, uh, maybe to Helen, um, and to follow up as kind of matters arising from the student uh, presentation, my understanding is the Vancouver Police Department did have a board meeting in the last 10 days and is there any um, so that we can the the indication is that they had not heard any response is that something that you can bring us up to date on um trustee richardson we have received a letter uh that's uh from from the board at this point in time um very recently and we will be able to update uh, you with more information as it comes available but we have re received a letter Additional uh, questions from trustees. Uh, thanks again to our student trustee, Mia Liu. Um, we appreciate you uh, coming to speak with us. Agenda number five, committee reports. Student Learning and Wellbeing Committee. Uh, the next item is committee reports. The first is the student learning and well-being report and the chairperson of that committee is trustee Friedcote. Item 5.1.1, um, meeting of January 11th, 2023, uh, trustee Friedcote to move receipt of report. Thank you, Madam Chair. The report of the January 11, 2023 Student Learning and Wellbeing Committee is in the agenda. In that report, there are two items for approval. The Board Authority authorized BAA courses and the district calendar update and uh, an information item safe and caring school update. I move receipt of the report. Is there a seconder? Trustee Richardson? Do we have any questions about those minutes themselves? If there are no objections, we will adopt the report by consensus. The report is adopted. I will go back to Trustee Friedcoat for matters arising from the meeting. Item 5.1.2, um, matters arising. 5.1.2.1, Board Authority authorized BAA courses that the Board approve 
grade 10 to 12 BAA course, Filipino language and culture 11. Uh, Trustee Friedko to move the recommendation. Madam Chair, the first matter arising is a recommendation from the Student Learning and Wellbeing Committee for the Board Authority BAA courses and the motion reads that the board approved the grade 10 to 12 BAA course Filipino language and cultural 11. I will move the recommendation. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Uh, Trustee Ma, are there any discussion? Comments, uh, Trustee Fraser. Thank you, um, Chairperson. And when we were in the Student Learning and Wellbeing Committee, we had a very, quite an extensive report about the uh, course that came forward. And um, it was really, I, I really appreciated the work that's been done to bring this to the board. Um, it talks to uh, the, the teacher who's presenting earlier about students seeing themselves in what they're learning and um, being, uh, you know, having choices to make about their own learning. So in the report, um, it, ref it talks about how this was uh, brought forward through uh, Tupper Secondary. So I'd like to appreciate uh, Principal Jason Lozon and uh, teacher Maria Ramirez for their work on this project. Do we have any other comments from trustees? I will now take a vote on the motion. All those in favor? Trustee Zhang, Trustee Chan Pedley, Trustee Ma, Trustee Shin, Trustee Friedcoat, Trustee Richardson, Trustee Fraser, and Trustee Young. Uh, the motion carries unanimously. Are there any? Are there any matters arising? Thank you uh, to those who came out tonight. Um, item 5.1.2.2, district calendar update, that the board approve the district calendars for the 2023-24 and 2024-25 and the year 2025-26 school years as attached. Trustee Friedcoat, to move the recommendation. Yes, Madam Chair, there is. We have a recommendation from the Student Learning and Wellbeing Committee for an update to the district calendar for the next three years. Before I move the recommendation, I would like to advise that the district calendars in the agenda package include a correction to the winter break dates from, from the ones presented at the committee meeting. Motion number two reads, that the board approves the district calendar for the 2023-24, 2024-25, and 2025-26 school years as attached. And I move the recommendation. Thank you. Do we have a seconder? Trustee Chan Pedley. Do we have discussion? Comments from the board? We will now take a vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Before we move on to our next committee report, I would just like to take a two minute recess in the case that um, people, if people would like to leave the meeting, they're welcome to.
Okay, we are calling the meeting back to order at 1943. Agenda item 5.2, Facilities Planning Committee. The next item is the Facilities Planning Report. I call Vice Chair of the Committee, Trustee Zhang, who chaired the meeting in my absence. Trustee uh, 5.2.1, report meeting of January the 18th, 2023. Trustee Zhang to move receipt of the report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the report of the Facilities Planning Committee is in the agenda. In that report, there are two items for approval. One is the consideration for a renaming of Lord Roberts Elementary School. And the other is the proposed Sir Guy Carlton catchment changes. Uh, I'm going to move receipt of the report. Is there a seconder to receive the report? Trustee Richardson. Are there any questions about the minutes themselves? There are no objections. We will adopt the report by consensus. Report uh, adopted. The next item on the agenda is matters arising from the facilities planning committee. I will hand the chair to Vice Chair Friedcoat uh, so I can speak to the matters arising. Thank you, Trustee Jung. Would you like to read the first matter arising? Uh, item 5.2.2.1, consideration for renaming of Lord Roberts Elementary School, that Lord Roberts Elementary School be renamed. The first matter is a recommendation from the Facilities Planning Committee for the Lord Roberts Elementary School renaming, and the motion reads that, that Lord Roberts Elementary School be renamed. I will move this recommendation. Is there a seconder? Second by Trustee Chen Pedley. Is there any discussion? We will now take, go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Um, I appreciate the um, Lots of work that's been done um, from the uh, working group that put together the uh, report um, and also the um, the work behind the scenes with the renaming and uh, the naming and renaming procedures behind the scenes as well. Um, and um, I think the the evidence is clear that you know it's time to to give the school a new name, and I um, really look forward to uh, watching this process unfold. Thank you. Trustee Fraser. Thank, thank you. And I'd, I'd like to, in addition to Trustee Chan Pedley's comment, comments, um, acknowledge the work in the school community of the parents and the staff in bringing this forward. And uh, one of the things that they did was provide a, quite a detailed information package about who Lord Roberts was. And um, that was certainly influential in um, in uh, helping me understand why his his name and his um, legacy do not reflect um, where we are at the school district now in the 2023. So. Thank you. We will now take word on the motion. Please raise your hand if you're in favor. The motion carries unanimously. Are there any other matter arising? Item uh, 5.2.2.2.1. A proposed Sir Guy Carlton catchment changes. Madam Chair, uh, the motion number two has four parts. I move the catchment for Sir Guy Cal uh, Carlton Elementary School be geographic area defined by the following. North side of Kingsway Avenue between McKinnon Street and Joyce Street east side of Joyce Street between Kingsway and 41st Avenue, south side of 41st Avenue between McKinnon Street and Joyce Street, 
west side of McKinnon Street between Kingsway Avenue and 41st Avenue. Is there a seconder? Second by Trustee Chen Pedley. Is there any discussion? Trustee Fraser. Um, I, I, you know, this came to committee and, um, you know, there was a, a long report and the recommendation came out from the committee to support this. And I, um, I was, a, I'm trying to remember if I'm on that committee or not, but I was definitely at the meeting. So um, I, I think it's, you know, we're in a place where this is the right thing to do. And um, maybe we, we don't particularly want to be in that place, but this is where we are. We will now take vote on the motion. Please raise your hand if you're in favor. The motion carries unanimously. Thank you. I move the follow or item 5.2.2.2.2. I move the following geographic area be added to the existing catchment of Cunningham Elementary. North side of Kingsway Avenue between Earl Street and College Street. East side of College Street between Kingsway and 41st Avenue. South side of 41st Avenue between Earl Street and College Street. West side of Earl Street between Kingsway Avenue and 41st Avenue. Is there a seconder? Second by Trustee Richardson. Is there any discussion? No discussion. Okay, we will now take vote on the motion. Please raise your hand if you're in favor. The motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Item 5.2.2.2.3. I move the following geographic area be added to the existing catchment of Dr. George M. Weir Elementary. North side of Kingsway Avenue between College Street and McKinnon Street. North side of 41st Avenue between McKinnon Street and Joyce Street. East side of McKinnon Street between Kingsway Avenue and 41st Avenue. East side of Joyce Street between 41st Avenue and 45th Avenue. South side of 41st Avenue between College Street and Lancaster Street. South side of 46th Avenue between Lancaster Street and Joyce Street. West side of College Street between Kingsway Avenue and 41st Avenue. East side of Lancaster Street between 41st Avenue and 45th Avenue. Is there a seconder? Second by Trustee Fraser. Is there any discussion? Trustee Zhang. Uh, just very briefly through you, Chair, for the, if anyone's taking minutes, I think you said the very last point. Uh, I think you said east side of Lancaster Street. I think it's, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be west side or if it's east side, but. Thank you for that. Uh, if, if, if that was the case, I apologize. The correction is west side of Lancaster Street between 41st Avenue and 45th Avenue. Thank you, Trustee Zhang. Are there any more discussions? If not, we will now take vote on the motion. If in favor, please raise your hand. The motion carries unanimously. Item 5.2.2.2.4, I move the following geographic area be added to the existing catchment of Dr. N.H. McCorkendale Elementary, north side of Kingsway between Joyce Street and Tyne Street, east side of Tyne Street between Kingsway Avenue and 45th Avenue, south side of 45th Avenue between Joyce Street and Tyne Street. <clears throat> West side of Joyce Street between Kingsway Avenue and 45th Avenue. Is there a seconder? Second by Trustee Zhang. Is there any discussion? Trustee Ma. Again, I sort of reiterate what Janet Fraser said earlier about um, having to make these catchment changes. It's not a happy thing that we're doing here. And I'm glad to see that 
Sir Guy Carlton is still um, there in this motion that we're just changing the catchment areas. Thank you. We will now take vote on the motion. Please raise your hand if you're in favor. The motion carries unanimously. Before we move on, Trustee Young will now assume the chair. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Trustee Friedcoat. Item agenda number 5.3, Finance Committee. The next item is the finance report and the chairperson of that committee is Trustee Zhang. Uh, 5.3.1, report meeting of January the 18th, 2023. Uh, Trustee Zhang, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the report of the Finance Committee meeting dated January 18th, 2023 is in the agenda. I would like to move receipt of this report. Do we have a seconder? Trustee Friedcoat. Are there any questions about the minutes? If there are no questions or objections, I will adopt the report by consensus. The report is adopted. Item uh, agenda 5.3.2, matters arising. Are there any matters arising from the Finance Committee? Uh, Madam Chair, there are no matters arising from the Finance Committee. Thank you, Trustee Zhang. Uh, the online link for submitting questions to this meeting will now be closed. We will now move to item six, report on private session. Um, agenda number 6.1, special meeting of January 4th, 2023. That the board authorized the board chair to report to the January 30th, 2023 public meeting that at the private session of January 4th, 2023, the board discussed personnel and bargaining matters. That the board authorized the board chair to report to the January 30th, 2023 public meeting that at the private session of January 4th, 2023, the board passed a motion to ratify the Board of Education of School District Number 39, Vancouver, and Vancouver Teachers Federation, uh, VEA. ES, Adult Educator Sublocal, Memorandum of Agreement for the next three years subject to the approval of the British Columbia Public School Employers Association and the Public Sector Employees Council. That the board authorized the board chair to report to the January 30th, 2023 public meeting that at the private session of January 4th, 2023, the board passed a motion to ratify the Board of Education of School District Number 39, Vancouver, and the Canadian Union of Public Employees, CUPE, Local 407 Memorandum of Agreement for the next three years subject to the approval of the British Columbia Public School Employers Association and the Public Sector Employers Council. That the board authorized the board chair to report to the January 30th, 2023 public meeting that at the private session of January 4th, 2023, as per Section 4 of Board Policy 4, Trustee Friedcoat recused herself from the meeting prior to discussion of an item due to a potential conflict of interest. Agenda 6.2, special meeting of January 24th, 2023. That the board authorized the board chair to report to the January 30th, 2023 public meeting that at the private session of January 24th, 2023, the board discussed personnel, bargaining, and legal matters. That the board authorized the board chair to report to the January 30th, 2023 public meeting that at the private session of January 24th, 2023, the board passed a motion to ratify the Board of Education of School District Number 39, Vancouver, and the International Union of Operating Engineers, IUOE, Local 963 Memorandum of Agreement, for the next three years, subject to the approval of the, British, of the British Columbia Public School Employers Association and the Public Sector Employers Council. That the board authorized the board chair to report to the January 30th, 2023 public meeting that at the private session of January 24th, 2023, 
the board passed a motion to ratify the Board of Education of School District Number 39, Vancouver, and the Canadian Union of Public Employees, QP, Local 15, Memorandum of Agreement for the next three years subject to the approval of the British Columbia Public School Employers Association and the Public Sector Employers Council. Almost done. That the board authorize the board chair to report to the January 30th, 2023 public meeting that at the private session of January 24th, 2023, as per section four of board policy four, Trustee Friedco recused herself from the meeting prior to discussion of an item due to a potential conflict of interest. Agenda item 6.3, meeting of January 30th, 2023. That the board authorize the board chair to report to the January 30th, 2023 public meeting that at the private session of tonight, January 30th, 2023, the board discussed property, personnel, legal matters, and business interests. Agenda seven, uh, item number seven, reports from trustee representatives. The next section of the meeting is reports from trustee representatives, and there are reports from trustee Fraser, myself, trustee Young, and trustee Chan Pedley. Are there any questions about these reports? I, I'll just quickly mention the reports uh, from uh, 7.1 from Trustee Fraser was on the Indigenous Education Committee, that meeting that was held December 15th, 2022. Item 7.2 uh, was a report from myself, Trustee Young, uh, from the Vancouver Public Library meeting held January 25th, 2023. And then item 7.3 was a report from Trustee Chan Pedley on the Diversity Advisory Committee meeting held on January 11th, 2023. Thank you very much for the input. Um, trustees. If there are no questions or uh, comments on these reports, we can now move to new business. Agenda item number eight, new business. Do we have any new business? Thank you, trustees. Agenda item number nine, notices of motion. We now move to notice of motion, and the first notice of motion is from Trustee Fraser on expanding childcare at VSB sites. Thank you, Chairperson. And I provided written notice of this motion at the previous board meeting, so I'd like to move the motion that that the Vancouver Board of Education requests staff to provide an update on current zero to four and school age childcare on VSB sites including consideration of the number of childcare spaces, number of operators, and the type of building space, and explore strategies and make recommendations to increase childcare spaces on VSB sites, including the consideration of outdoor childcare and portable buildings, and that these reports be presented at the Facilities Planning Committee. Trustee Fraser, would you like to address this motion, uh, notice of motion this evening or refer it to committee? I'd like to address it today. Do we have a seconder? Trustee Chan Pedley. Uh, discussion from trustees. So if I could speak to the motion. Please. So thank you. And um, we know that in the city that we live in that childcare is essential to many of our families, both for children before they reach school age and for before and after school care uh, once they're uh, VSB students. Um, it's, we know that it's a struggle for many families to find quality, accessible childcare in the neighbourhood. And we, as a school board, we have the opportunity to make our sites available to uh, our partners, our non-profit partners who offer childcare in, the, in every community across the district. Uh, the most recent report we had was from March 2019 data, in which we had just over 4,000 uh, spaces in 117 programs. But we know that in recent years, new buildings have been constructed, maybe some uh, childcare have uh, expanded. So I think it's appropriate that we have an update on what we can offer at the moment. And then that can be a platform to look at what we can do to expand uh, sites available um, 
expand the number of childcare sites, childcare spaces available on our sites. We know that the city of Vancouver is very interested in also expanding childcare in the city and that there is uh, support from the senior levels of government at both the provincial and federal level. So I hope that um, in passing this motion, uh, our district can be part of helping Vancouver be a place where young families with where families with young children can live and thrive. Thank you, Trustee Fraser. Comments? Trustee Ma. Oh. Chair, um, I speak in favor of this motion. Uh, during my campaign leading up to the school board elections, I had the opportunity to talk to parents and parents-to-be at 89 elementary school sites, farmers markets, and other venues. One of their top concerns was to find early childhood daycare and before and after school care. It would be prudent for us to review what possibilities there are for future expansion due to the high demand for childcare. We know that families move to school catchments where there is childcare space and it would allow families to feel secure knowing that they can go back to work if they wish and have their child safe and well cared for. So I would urge uh, fellow trustees to support this. Thank you, Trustee Ma. Uh, Trustee Chan Pedley. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I too speak in favor of this motion. Um, we know that we need more childcare spaces. Um, in particular, I know as a young parent, um, when I was looking at, uh, you know, possible childcare for my own family, um, I looked at all the possibilities. One thing that stuck out for me was outdoor childcare and outdoor education. Um, we know that uh, uh, there's there's queues and wait lists for outdoor uh, childcare, um, and not enough providers who run them. Um, we know the limitation here um, has a lot to do with the licensing at Vancouver Coastal Health. Um, so uh, whatever, I think whatever the, the district can do to help put this puzzle together, that would be great, um, especially in light of, you know, we have limited space and we want to harmonize with the ministry's new mandate of, of providing childcare um, as well. So um, I think getting the lay of the land in this initial step would be really, really great. Thank you. Thank you, um, Trustee Chan Pedley. I will go to Trustee Richardson. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I too would will be voting for this motion, and I believe that you know this board has, in fact, um, although it may not be seen by all to be a primary mandate of of a school board to provide childcare, but I look back to my time uh, on the board of the Mount Pleasant Community Center when a community center was moving, and we all kind of looked at each other and said, the "Community center is gone. The childcare spaces are leaving," um, and it was a school board that. You know, recommended that for the neighborhood of Mount Pleasant that it was in fact within the uh, lands of the school board that the best siting of those replacement spaces uh, be placed on there. So we've we have a long history of of being supportive of childcare, um, but I think it's more or very important because as uh, uh, Trustee Ma mentions, I did hear that a lot of people make decisions in terms of what school, and we would hope that people are making decisions. To, to attend their neighborhood school because there's a whole lot of advantages to that in terms of transportation and other things. But I, one of the decisions is, is I make a decision based upon the availability of before, before school and after school care, um, which may not be their neighborhood school. So we need a, a, a pulse of what that is. And during the election, I was approached by a leader of a not-for-profit that does provide some. And the suggestion was that some districts actively kind of recruit providers of those services and say, can we work together? So this report would allow us to understand what possibilities there are. Now this takes time. And I, I, I then refer back to our primary mandate is the education of children. And so I guess as part of this report, I'd like some mention to be that uh, some estimate of what the time is, is now that we're supporting childcare to be built as part of our new schools, that takes time to act, actively try to recruit um, uh, operators to provide these, it takes time. And this is a mandate that's primarily a provincial mandate. 
And therefore, I would hope that this report would also address that so that we can, in fact, provide or receive the necessary supports by the provincial government to support that child care mandate, which is part of their mandate. But we're happy to do it, but we don't want to take it away from our other responsibilities. So hopefully we'll vote in favour of this and that in due course, as staff are able to provide us with this information, we can then move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Richardson. Uh, Trustee Friedcoat. Thank you, Chair. I also support, um, I'm also in favor of this motion. Um, I believe that child care helps to give children a good life, good start in life, uh, settling them down for thriving in school and improve life, lifelong physical and mental health. It's uh, very vital to our city, and I think um, this is uh, this is a really good motion. We should all support it. Thank you. Comments from other trustees uh, who haven't spoken yet. Thank you, uh, Trustee Fraser, for bringing this forward. Um, I would like to, we'd like to take votes on this. Um, all those in favor? Any opposed? Okay, then the motion carries unanimously. I will now ask Trustee Ma to present uh, item number 9.2.1. I'll ask Trustee Ma to present her first notice of motion on the support for the Single Mothers Alliance Transit for Teens campaign in achieving free transit for youth aged 13 to 18. Trustee Ma. Chair, I'd like to uh, move the proposed motion that the Vancouver Board of Education endorse the Single Mothers Alliance Transit for Teens campaign, and in doing so, write a letter to the Mayor's Council on Regional Transportation, the Board of Directors of BC Transit, the Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure, the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change Strategy, the Office of the Premier, the Ministry of Social Development and Poverty Reduction, the Ministry of Education and Child Care, the Minister of State for Infrastructure and Transit, the Ministry of Children and Family Development, and the Select Standing Committee on Children and Youth, requesting that a fully funded plan be implemented by the provincial government to provide free public transit for teens aged 13 to 18 in BC. Is there a seconder? Trustee Richardson. Discussion, Susie? Or yeah, excuse open. me, Trustee Thank Ma. You. That's okay, so I'll open. So I'm very pleased to bring forward this motion tonight. The Vancouver Board of Education trustees at its March 4th, 2019 open board meeting unanimously endorsed an advocacy plan to achieve free transit for children under 18 years of age. This was called the All On Board Campaign. The All On Board Campaign was comprised of an alliance of coalitions, organizations, community groups, advocates, unions, counselors, stakeholders, and passionate communities and citizens from municipalities across Metro Vancouver and throughout BC. The action the Vancouver School Board of Education took as a result of endorsing the campaign was to write a letter to TransLink's Mayor Council, which is part of TransLink's governance structure that approves plans dealing with transit service levels, major capital projects, and regional funding and borrowing limits. As a result, of the all on board's advocacy, including the Vancouver Board of Education's action, the provincial government implemented the new Get On Board program in September of 2021, which now provides universally accessible and free transit for all children and youth in BC ages zero to 12. Unfortunately, free transit for youth ages 13 to 18 was not achieved in this first campaign. The Single Mothers Alliance Transit for Teens campaign is a new campaign that carries on the work of all on board. It is the next step in advocating for free transit for youth 13 to 18. We know that the right to access um, elementary and high school in BC cannot be separated from the ability of all children and youth to access their school. Many low income families struggle to cover the cost of transit and many do not own vehicles. 
At our last public delegation meeting, we heard from a parent who said that if their teenage children were to be given free transit, this would put a few hundred dollars back into their pockets. We also heard from a teen that evening that having free transit would enable them to access mental health services more readily. Having to choose between paying for transit and food puts a strain on student well-being and physical health. By achieving free transit, we create a more equitable environment where all levels of income have equal treatment. I highlighted in the rationale what other benefits our district students and families would have if we were to achieve free transit for youth ages 13 to 18. But I would also like to add one more, and this also refers to the first goal and objective ensuring safety of our students. Firstly, youth who cannot access transit systems when they need may be left unsafe and at risk outside. By having universally unrestricted access to transit ensures that youth can get to safety using transit when needed. For example, if a teen is walking home after school in the dark, after an extracurricular activity, and they feel they are unsafe walking home, they would then have the option of hopping on a bus. Finally, my understanding is that the school district buys close to a thousand transit passes for students to use for field trips, sports, and other activities. If transit were to be free for youth zero to 18, this would be a cost savings to the board. By approving this motion, current trustees would be carrying on the work of an already endorsed goal of achieving free transit for all students ages zero to 18 we are requesting that a fully funded plan be implemented by the provincial government and that this plan be at no cost to the school district. Thank you, Trustee Ma. Comments from the board? Uh, Trustee Friedcoat. I, I will also speak in favor of this motion. Um, First of all, I would like to uh, thank Single Mother Alliance for bringing this um, forward in our public board meeting. Also, uh, Trustee Ma for, you know, bringing this motion so that we can write a letter to all the uh, different committees. Um, I believe that the youth age 13 to 18 are the ones that are more independent, who are willing to take public transit. Um, and to learn day-to-day -day life. So um, we should all fully support this mo motion and help our young teens um, so that they can learn how to, um, you know, be more independent and be more confident. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Friedko, Trustee Richardson. I too will support this and I'm, I'm pleased that, uh, you know, it. I think it's important that we, we emphasize the fact that there are educational reasons for this um, other than safety. I mean, beyond safety is that uh, I think a number of years ago, there was a, a fact that if a student misses 13 classes in a term, they're set for failure. And if, if there is a, a, you know, a need to make a decision, do I take the bus to school? I may be late today. It's raining. Uh, maybe I'm not going to go to school. I would like that decision to be easy. Um, but I would think from the, I guess, putting it, I mean, although it says free, somebody pays the cost. So I would say that it's justified in terms of transit to get youth and 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 children in the habit of saying, hey, let's take transit. Um, and they may take transit for the rest of their life. So in fact, I think that there is, in fact, some arguments that meet our mandate, but also meet the mandate of transit to to, to increase ridership lifelong ridership. So I think this, uh, hopefully this will be uh, successful. And is there anyone else we can send a letter to? I mean, I'm <laughs> like all the M MLAs, but I leave that to the mover of the motion. Thank you. Can I just respond to, Chris, to Trustee Richardson's last comment? Um, this was the advice from the Single Mothers uh, campaign, that this is the list, the approved list that they would like us to address. Uh, additional comments, uh, Trustee Fraser, please. Thank you, and I'm also in support of this motion and thank uh, Trustee Ma for bringing it forward and also recognize the speakers at the delegation meeting uh, earlier 
well, yes, earlier this month, and the uh, report that the Single Mothers Alliance com compiled from the pilot study in the city of Vancouver that has a lot of quotes from students who participated in that and the impact of having free transit in their lives. I'd also like to note that we had a number of guests, student guests at the meeting this evening, and I understand many of them took transit to get here. So that's another um, uh, aspect of students' lives that could be enhanced with free transit. So thank you. Questions, comments? If there's no uh, further discussion, I would like uh, this to go to vote. Uh, those in favor? All are in favor. This um, motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Trustee Ma. Agenda item 9.2.2. Trustee Ma will now present her next notice of motion, motion to 2023 BC STA annual general meeting to support the Single Mothers Alliance Transit for Teens campaign in achieving free transit for youth age 13 to 18. Trustee Ma. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I would like to move that the Vancouver Board of Education submit the following motion to the 2023 BC STA Annual General Meeting, and the motion be that the BC STA endorse the Single Mothers Alliance for Transit for Teens campaign, and in doing so, write a letter to the Mayor's Council on Regional Transportation, the Board of Directors of BC Transit, the Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure, the Ministry of the Environment and Climate Change Strategy, the Office of the Premier, the Ministry of Social Development and Poverty Reduction, the Ministry of Education and Child Care, the Minister of State for Infrastructure and Transit, the Ministry of Children and Family Development, and the Select Standing Committee on Children and Youth, requesting that a fully funded plan be implemented by the provincial government to provide free public transit for teens aged 13 to 18 in BC. Thank you, Trustee Ma. Do we have a seconder? Trustee Friedcote. Uh, discussion. Can I open, please? Uh, yes, please. Thank you. So, Chair, the purpose of this motion is to put it on the BC School Trustees Association annual general meeting agenda and have the BC STA also endorse the Single Mothers Alliance for Transit for Teens campaign. The Vancouver Board of Education would take on a leadership role in urging other trustees to, in turn, also endorse the campaign in their school districts. The forwarded motion for the BCSTA annual general meeting, if provincially adopted, would not direct individual boards of education to write letters to support the campaign, but it would result in the BCSTA as a provincial body representing all school trustees write letters to the list of recipients. I have heard that both New Westminster and North Vancouver trustees are discussing the endorsation of the campaign at their prospective board meetings. So furthermore, by achieving free transit for students and youth from ages zero to 18, all students in BC would benefit as many students not only take transit within one school district, but they may in fact have the necessity to travel into other fair zones to get to their part-time jobs, medical appointments, and other support services. For example, if a student had a part-time job at Metrotown and needed to use transit, it would allow free transit from Vancouver to Metrotown instead of having free transit only in Vancouver and then having to pay a fare once they enter Burnaby's fare zone. So the reason why I've put this on this agenda today is that the deadline for the BC STA AGM motion submission is uh, February 24th. 2023. And because we don't have a board meeting um, until after that, that's why I wanted it dealt with this evening. Thank you, Chair. Discussion from the trustees. There are no further discussion. We will go to a vote. All those in favor? The motion uh, carries unanimously. <coughs> Uh, the next notice of motions uh, are for myself, so I will hand the chair to Trustee Friedcote. 
Tech, thank you, Trustee Young. Would you like to present your notice of motion on the creation of combined finance and personnel standing committee? The proposed motion uh, that policy eight board committees be amended to combine finance committee and personnel committee into one standing committee to be named the finance and personnel committee. <clears throat> Amendments to pol policy eight to outline the purpose, function, duties, powers, and membership of a combined finance and personnel committee to be reviewed at the policy and governance committee prior to consideration and adoption. Uh, rationale, uh, board uh, policy eight states that the board will establish standing Sorry. committees. To Point of order, Chair. I think the motion has just been moved and it needs a seconder before we continue. Is there a seconder? I'm, I'm providing rationale for my motion. Is she moving it? Is that? Are you moving it? Yeah. Ah, okay. Uh, Second by Trustee Young. Zang? Yeah. Do you, um, would you like to addre address this motion tonight, this evening, or refer to the committee? I'd like to refer to committee, thank you. Okay, thank you. Are there any discussions? Trustee Ma? I just wanted clarification of what just happened. And so what we're saying is that this notice of motion is now going to be referred to where? Policy and Governance Committee. All right. Would you like to add something more? Uh, no, thank you. I'm happy to present my next motion if that's okay, Chair. Yeah, please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, agenda item 9.3.2, um, the, that the student learning and well-being committee be renamed the education plan committee and that revisions be made to the duties and function of this renamed committee to support and inform the ongoing implementation of the education plan. Changes to policy eight will be reviewed at the policy and governance committee prior to consideration and adoption by the board. Is there a mover and a seconder? No. Would you like to address this motion, notice of motion this evening or refer to the committee? Refer to committee, please, thank you. Thank you. Clarification again, Trustee Ma. Where are we referring this to? The Policy and Governance Committee, as stated in the proposed motion. Trustee Young will now assume the chair for the rest of the meeting. Thank you, uh, Vice Chair Friedcote. I would like to take a short recess before we address agenda item number 10, public question period. So we will, it is currently 826 and we will um, be back in approximately five minutes. Thank you.
bring back um, into session at 2035. So we've received two questions during question period, and I would just like to uh, address um, the first one. And in, in um, to ensure transparency, we ask that um, those who submit uh, do not submit anonymously. We appreciate people identifying themselves so we can ensure transparency and allow for a follow-up that's appropriate. As such, we can address the question in the future um, should there be um, some identification. So I'd welcome that individual uh, to resubmit, please. The question, the second question we received, um, just a question asked about a name change to Carlton. The matter referred to a change in the school trustee liaison assignment. Uh, both Carlton and Cunningham are housed at Cunningham Elementary. So having one liaison for both school communities rather than two different trustees uh, was, was uh, what the decision was. And the board has not made any decisions on the future of Carlton building, which has not been operational since the fire in August of 2016. Uh, and so if that was um, a product of, of me, uh, of misspeaking, I apologize and thank you for your clarification question. That, uh, so that, that sums agenda number, item number 10, which was public question period. And we are on to agenda item number 11, which is Adjournment, if there are no objections from trustees, we can adjourn by consensus. There being no objections, the meeting is adjourned at 2036. Thank you very much.